Okay, here we are back again with more ABC murders. Uh, I can't exactly remember where I was. I think we just finished questioning a guy with a really rough Scottish accent. Sounded a bit like Taggart. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so we just finished talking to him. Don't think he did both of the murders because he had no reason to do the first one. We're on our way somewhere. Can't remember where that was, though. Let's... Oh, we're getting... Oh, yeah, okay. Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at setting up. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree. Without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the crime. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Yeah, did this happen at day or night? You'd have thought if she was down at the beach it would have happened at, in the daytime. Especially if she was getting changed to go swimming. Don't know if night swimming was a big thing in the 30s. Well, this is dark. The killer oh, okay. and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to act number five. Uh. No, it was six, wasn't it? Both of them walk slowly to act number six. Yeah. I'm sure it was six. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a code. I buggered up the last one of these and had to do it again. Hopefully, see if I can get it right this time. Uh, do I remove the belt now? Or no, advance. They keep walking. Then she removes a belt. Yeah. The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Now, did I get all that right or is Poirot going to tell me that I fucked it? Appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. Ah, it did it. Exactly what happened. At least I don't have to go through that whole thing again. Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser. But by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure he's accused. In a way, it is very generous of him. Generous? The murderer seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed, the young woman was certainly careless, but not stupid enough to follow a stranger. What are you planning to do, Poirot? Return to London, mon cher Hastings. So it's somebody that she knew. Somebody that... Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, wait, no, yeah, we don't need to look at that. I can remember most of that. Go back to London. Okay. Ten ego points. I don't actually know what the ego points do. Weird. Sometimes when I double click, he moves fast, and sometimes he doesn't. It's irritating. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. So there's a few things in common with both the cases so far. I still don't know who that pedo at the start was with the glasses and the gloves. Uh, what's happening here? Oh no! I've, oh, there we go. Decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. 
Oh, is he gonna go up and get it this time? It's about fucking time. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Shut the fuck Let up. Let's see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. So this person's name's gonna begin with C. Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. Uh, specify that it is the 30th day or ask what the date is. Let's be a dick. By the way, Hastings, what day is it? Well, looking at the calendar, it's the 30th. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already 10 o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. So it begins with a C. So it could be the rest or China. Could be Chris Pratt. Hmm. Miss Haste, Hastings tore the envelope. Okay. So what does that tell us? Not known at Whitehorse Mansions and Whitehorse Court. Try Whitehaven Mansions. Oh, that's where we live, okay. Okay. Is there anything else I can do with this? Not just now. Uh, do I have a... I'm sorry, so I need to phone Scotland Yard, so where is the phone? It's over here, isn't it? Oh, I forgot, I need to look in the mirror. Did I need to have a good look at the old glasses and the moustache? Yep, can't forget that, that's vital to the success of these investigations. Right, phone must be here. Hello, chap. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. Right. I'm assuming I now need to go to Churston. Compare the new letter. Oh! Ah, fuck. No. What? Is... Oh, okay. He's packing suitcases. Okay. It is not a good. What do you mean it's not a good time? It is not a good time. What? Poor Mr. Poirot. Oh, maybe I need to so actually look at it first. Yourself, are you? Has I passed your prime, perhaps? Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it is an easy one. Chest on, on the 30s. Do try and do something about it. It is a bit dull, having it all my own way, you know? Good hunting. Ever yours. I mean, yeah, we've already read it, okay. Alright, now can I look at it on the desk? Now that I've read it a second time? No, what the fuck? Am I being dumb? Right, do, is, is there something I've missed on this? Poor Mr. No, 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 shut up, shut up. Alright, what about this? Have I missed something on this? No. Or this. The stamp, maybe? No? Outpost? No? Right, maybe I need to find the other... The other letters. Is not a good. Does he want the fan on before he does it? Ah, some cool hair. That better not be it. It is not a good. Okay, no. 
Uh, do I need to read the papers? Daily Flicker, July 30, 1935. The Daily Fucker. ABC affair. No progress. The alphabet murderer is still on the run. Ever since the police found the connection between the Bexil and Endover affairs, the inquiry has barely progressed. In this issue, we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to Hercule Poirot. Unfortunately, they have not yet helped to find him. Okay. Maybe I need to speak to Hastings again. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to... Acknowledge it. It's an emergency. Point out the order. Oh, yeah, order is essential. This order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. Oh, is this going to be like fucking suitcase Tetris or something? It really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Bath towel. Badly folded pyjama. Oh, good God, man. Fold your shit properly. Unprotected bottles. What is that? Toothpaste. Okay. Uh, voilà. It only took a minute. What an absolute monster. Poirot, you were right. Right about what? I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Well, so now's a good time to do it, but a minute ago wasn't, when you knew damn well fine there wasn't a hurry. Had to pack that bastard suitcase first. Time is it anyway? But, oh, the fucking hell. I just checked my own watch to look at the time thinking I might miss that train. Right, let us compare this new letter with the second one. Right, let's do some thinking. Let us examine this more closely. Yeah, yeah. Got it. The eyes, the same. Characters in... Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare. Then one of these eyes. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do... Indeed so that's the same as the first two letters. So we know he's using... Probably the same typewriter. Uh, do, 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 do. What else have we got? Those hyphens are quite high. Anything hyphenated here? No. Oh, double use. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were defective. Yeah. Right, let us compare this with the And this one. Of course, the W characters in the two. We knew this from the last I letter. Some other similar defects too. Not so good at all these criminal matters as you thought yourself. Or anything about the commas? Maybe they're quite thick. No. I already know. Oh, no, that's the W. I have to find some other... Um, that E's a bit higher up. The characters in this world. Right. Let us compare this. Yeah, so the E's are slightly higher up than other letters. No, this character does not appear to have any defects. Let us examine another word. Eh, fuck off. I'll fucking tell you what... Bastard. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's going to be exactly the same again, isn't it? The, the A is wrong as well. Right. 
Cap it away, cap it away. Yeah. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defect. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. We already fucking knew that. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Right, okay. Uh, Jap went to the press. Let us see. Was sent at the right date. Bottle White Horse. So, wrong address and, yep. Yeah. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Answer the phone. Okay. I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Ah, oh, nobody famous. Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. Inspector Jap sounds absolutely enthralled by this. Yes, let's meet on the train, yeah. This is nice. I've not bothered with any of the reconstructions yet. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. It was that fucking seagull. I, I, it was that. It was a fucking seagull. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. I don't know. I know what you've done, fucking seagull. I'm on to you. I'm on to you, you little shit. Come here. This place is very calming. Hmm. I know it was you. Ah, yes, the mystery of uh, bushes clipping through the ground. Rabbit hole, wildflowers. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. Okay, well, before we actually go and take a look at uh, the dead guy over here, I'm going to stop this video right here for now. So thanks again very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I shall catch you next time.